Good afternoon. Uh, we're happy to be uh, opening an additional way for folks to be able to get monoclonal antibody treatments uh, here in Orlando. And I'll go through some of those details, which are really exciting. Uh, but first, I want to thank Simone Marsteller, our ACA Secretary, the v Division of Emergency Management Director, Kevin Guthrie, uh, Dr. Ken Shepke, who's the Chief Medical Officer for Florida Division of Emergency Management. Also have Representative True now here, uh, which we're very, uh, very excited that he's uh, here as well. Um, you know, we've uh, uh, really, I think, identified over the last couple weeks uh, one thing that, that just wasn't known enough in terms of uh, what do you do, you know, upon getting a positive test of COVID-19 and basically early treatment with these monoclonal antibodies, Regeneron and others, uh, have proven to radically reduce the chance that somebody ends up being hospitalized. And at the end of the day, you know, reducing hospital admissions uh, is, is got to be a top priority. And if you reduce those admissions, people don't go to the hospital to begin with, you know, they're going to recover. And so that's a really important thing. If you look at what we've seen in terms of data and other things over the last couple of weeks, CDC director even recently said that, you know, the vaccines are helping to reduce severe outcomes, not pr uh, protecting against transmission to the extent that we had hoped. If you look at what's going on in Israel, the, one of the most vaccinated countries in the world, they're seeing uh, an infection wave. And then there was a preprint out of the Mayo Clinic, which looked at the various vaccines, in particular protection against infection, and showed that some of them, particularly Pfizer, started to wane. And so, talk to the hospitals throughout Florida, I think they all say the protection against really severe illness is still holding, but in terms of it preventing, uh, creating the type of herd immunity or preventing uh, any type of infections, that hasn't necessarily been the case. I think the efficacy has not been quite what the clinical trials showed. So just, just understanding that, you know, we've got to make sure we look and understand, okay, there are people who are vaccinated who are testing positive. Obviously, you have unvaccinated who are testing positive. The unvaccinated are still more likely to be admitted to the hospitals. I mean, everyone uh, you talk to in any of these health systems uh, will say that their patients are disproportionately amongst those um, who are un unvaccinated. But it's interesting. There's been a lot of focus on that, and rightfully so. Um, you know, we, we've spoken to different systems and asked them, of your admitted patients for COVID, what percentage of them had received the monoclonal antibody prior to being admitted? And they say well over 90% of their current admissions did not get the monoclonal antibody treatment. And so that is uh, a tool in the toolbox that really needs to be used. And so we saw a need to one, just publicize it more, but two, also to expand access. Most of the health systems have been doing this since the EUA happened many, many months ago. Uh, and I know there are different transfusion centers or whatnot, which is good. But, you know, even a big health system, they're typically doing about 50 patients a day, uh, which is helpful. Uh, but we think once more people know about it, there's going to be an even bigger demand. And so here, what we're doing, we started one in Jacksonville. We have one here in Camping World Stadium. So this is going to be open seven days a week and is going to be able to treat up to 300 and 20 patients a day uh, right here at Camping World Stadium. So that is a really significant chunk of folks. And you're going to be able to actually, the Surgeon General has done a standing order, so you don't even need a prescription from a doctor. Um, and if you go on patientportalfl.com, to the same site where you could go and do a vaccine appointment, you know, you can do and reserve spots to do a monoclonal antibody treatment. Uh, and again, this has been shown to dramatically reduce the likelihood that you're admitted into the hospital. Simone's actually going to talk about a personal story on it. And I think most of the, you know, the data is very strong, but then just talking to people and how much better they feel after doing this, um, it really is striking to be able to see that. Um, and so we're going to be doing these sites. There's going to be more throughout the state uh, that we'll be rolling out in each one of them. We're looking at doing about 320 uh, treatments a day. Now, hopefully you don't need that many, uh, but what we want to send the message is, is uh, if you do test positive and you're somebody, particularly if you're high risk for severe COVID outcomes, elderly folks, immunocompromised, morbid obesity, diabetes, kidney problems, uh, chronic heart or lung conditions, you know, this is something uh, that really, if done early, uh, can make a big difference. But that's really the key is early intervention. Uh, once you're 
typical person that's testing positive, obviously, that, that, that doesn't have health problems, the body creates antibodies, it fights off the virus, they recover. Uh, well, when you have these categories, uh, sometimes there's problems with creating those antibodies naturally. This antibody cocktail basically turbocharges that and will fight off the virus. Now, once the virus is spread a certain amount within your body, uh, it can't really un unwind that at that point. And so that's the key, early treatment. Just know that this is out there and know that this is something that's going to be available for people. The Regeneron, just so everybody knows, is free. It's free to the state of Florida. The Trump administration basically just bought out all of the monoclonal antibodies once they were being developed. So it does not cost the state of Florida any money to get here, and it does not cost the patients any money to receive it. And so don't think that this is something, I hear some people say, oh, this is thousands of dollars. That is just not true. Uh, this is something that's free, and we want people to be able to take advantage of it. Um, and of course, especially uh, if you're high risk. And so. This is, um, I think, an important fight. I think it's been under-publicized. The good thing is that since we've been rolling out the expansion of this, more and more people uh, have, been, have been asking about it and more and more people have utilized it. We've already gotten great feedback from people uh, who went in, were feeling really bad, did it, and 24, 48 hours later started feeling much better. Uh, so those are really, really good stories. And again, go to patientportalfl.com. You can sign up uh, to be able to do it. And um, this is something that's very important. It's also having a successful, effective early treatment uh, is not mutually exclusive with, with vaccines. Uh, it's not an either or. You want to do both. I mean, if you're vaccinated, you're high risk, you, know, you still may want to get this treatment. Um, obviously, if you're not vaccinated and, and you're high risk and you get infected, you want to get the treatment. And so, so they're not mutually exclusive. They both go together. Um, we do believe that the folks who are being admitted to hospitals overwhelmingly tend to be people who are A, not vaccinated, but also B, that have not gotten this monoclonal antibody treatment. There are not a lot of people uh, who got it and then ended up in the hospital. And so I think that that's a testament that this is something that's been effective. So Simone Marsteller is here. I'm going to have her come up and, uh, and talk a little bit about this. Then Kevin will talk a little bit more about the, the state's footprint and what we're doing here in Central Florida. And we're going to be expanding. We'll do other parts of Central Florida. Uh, we're going to do other parts of Florida uh, as well. So that's all in the hopper and will be rolled out in the next few days. So, Simone. Thank you very much, Governor. Um, what you are doing is so very important to the people of the state of Florida right now. Spreading the word about the antibody uh, treatment and providing opportunities for uh, Floridians who are COVID positive to come and get this treatment. My portion of today for today is to give you all a personal story about how effective this treatment is. A uh, close family member, and uh, in fact my daughter, um, came down with COVID uh, about a week and a half ago. She had two days worth of symptoms, cough, very high fever, um, congestion, etc. Um, and I told her to go and get tested, which she did. So she started her symptoms on a Thursday, Thursday and Friday symptoms. Saturday went about the COVID test, and of course it was positive. She got her test results at about 2 o'clock that Saturday. By 5 p.m. that Saturday, she was getting the monoclonal antibody infusion. When we left the infusion center, her fever was 105. By 10 o'clock the next morning, her fever had dropped to 99. So when you hear that the, that the results of this treatment can indeed be dramatic and can keep people out of the hospital, it is, it's true and I've seen it. My daughter is immunocompromised. She has not yet been vaccinated. And yet the results of this antibody treatment had dramatic effects. And so I want to get the word out. I think it's important that people hear personal stories about how well this works. And I want to thank the governor for making this Governor, thank you for your leadership on this. As the governor mentioned, you know, that we're going to be doing some more of this this week as we continue to uh, bolster our capabilities in this in this arena. 
So again, what the Florida Division of Emergency Management is doing is our logistics section, our, our uh, logistics chief, Kevin Castro, and others at the State Emergency Response Team are going to be working with local emergency managers to identify places where we can set up, like Kevin World Stadium here, where we can come in and, and set up and issue the monoclonal antibodies. Uh, we'll continue to do that throughout the week again, and then we'll also look at what we can, what steps we can take as far as uh, uh, in, even into the next week, bolstering this uh, capability. So again, Governor, thank you very much for your leadership. Appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Kevin. I just want to thank you again for highlighting this very important life-saving therapy. Antibody therapy is nothing new to medicine. This is something we've been using for decades. We've gotten better and better at it. The general monoclonal antibody is, is the latest version of this. So it's definitely a life-saving medication that can reduce viral load, increase the number of days you have symptoms, and most importantly, prevent hospitalization and death. So once again, I want to thank you so much for highlighting this. And again, so. Uh, this will be something that will be open seven days a week. Uh, you go to patientportalfl.com, you'll be able to, to make uh, appointments. We are going to be doing more. Uh, we're going to be doing more in the Central Florida region. We're going to be doing more uh, South Florida. I mean, pretty much the whole state, you know, our goal is to have something uh, that's close. And this is not displacing anything that's already been done. Hot health systems have been doing this. Some doctor's offices have been doing it. That's very good. There's plenty of supply. So this is supplementing what's out there and then obviously doing it in a way that's easily accessible for people and that's increasing the visibility of this so that people know uh, that this is an option. Um, also just point out that you know, we are uh, working with uh, the Northeast, Northwest Florida counties on Tropical Storm Fred. Uh, we think it's actually gonna be a pretty strong, strong tropical storm by the time it makes landfall later today. We don't anticipate very much impacts in this region of the state, fortunately, uh, but we are working with them, and that's an area of the state, as many of you know, that, that got hit by Hurricane Michael a few years ago, did extensive damage. While this is not a Michael-type storm in terms of wind, uh, that part of Florida, and actually many parts of Florida, have been getting a lot of rain, so there's a lot of saturation. So as that comes, you know, we are anticipating some flash flooding and some other problems. So Kevin and those guys have been working. We'll be uh, back at the EOC tonight working on that, but they're very well well, well prepared. They've been working on this. You know, and I mean, they actually had it kind of riding the west coast of Florida, hitting north Florida, and then they did it all the way. It was going to go to Mississippi and Alabama yesterday at 11, and then they redid it back uh, to the state of Florida. So we're prepared for impacts, um, and we'll be responding appropriately. With that, we can take some questions. Yes, ma'am. Governor, um, I have a question. Do you understand the benefits of monoclonal antibodies? Do you see more people are using it here in Central Florida? Credit to that. But even this morning, our health leaders said that by far their preference is the vaccine. So why haven't you uh, come with the vaccine with the same enthusiasm as monoclonal? Well, I, I, um, uh, I would ask you to go back and look at the history. I No, no governor did more of public events than I did over 50 public events, you know, with this. If you look, our entire vulnerable population has basically been vaccinated. Uh, we continue, even though we've done all the nursing homes, for example, we still see people that are testing positive in the nursing home. So it's not, yeah, they're vaccinated. That's great. That was the right thing to do. I do think it, it, it reduced for at least a few months the number of infections in nursing homes. But it's not just Florida. You're seeing now more people are testing positive. So then what do you do? So it's totally not a mutually exclusive. But if somebody tests positive, if they're unvaccinated, the vaccine isn't going to treat it. They need it to be treated. So do both. But just understand, people who are vaccinated are still testing positive. People who are very high risk, the vaccine is reducing their exposure to serious illness, but it's still something we want them to know. If you, if you do it, talk to your doctor, maybe you still want to do this, and I know people have done that um, as this has been going on. Yes, sir. Uh, given the need for treatments like this, and, and given the numbers that you just spoke about, where are you with your administration when it comes to releasing daily COVID numbers? Well, that, that's something that health department's doing. They are released. Uh, to, to they, they are, every day CDC puts out the case numbers, um, and that's something that people have, have had access to the, the whole Florida time. The Department of Health is not. Anyone they, else? They're yep. only releasing them every week. Why, why is the Florida Department of Health doing that? It, it's being released through the CDC. CDC is doing the same thing that, that health would do. You don't want the state to do that. Now you want to move that to the feds. It's coming from the state. That's the four four. The state the state uploads it there. Yes, sir. Governor, on the issue of health care workers, they tell us they're emotionally and physically So the question
question is about uh, some of the, the medical staff. Um, one, it's been very, very difficult because for a year and a half, you know, they've been on uh, really a different footing than they were previously. And I think also in, in this, this uh, 2021 summer wave, because you have so many uh, vulnerable that have been vaccinated, some of the folks that are showing up um, are more kind of middle-aged folks, which is a little bit different than last wave. But I think that's something that's more close to what these healthcare workers are and their families and everything. And not that someone that's 90 that has problems, and that's still a sad thing, but uh, I think that it has been tough. In fact, I was talking to one of the big uh, health systems here, one of the CEOs, and, and he said specifically that that's weight. So that's been very difficult. You also have a shortage of staff nationwide. You have these, uh, basically these agencies that can farm this stuff out. And so you can make a lot of money being a traveling staff member. Uh, I spoke with uh, folks uh, in Central Florida and beyond. They all say that this is their responsibility. We did have a lot of staff that we farmed out uh, throughout 2020, and uh, we were happy to do that. Cost the state a lot of money, uh, but there have been a lot of times to prepare, and I know that they're uh, making whatever um, arrangements they need to do. But yeah, look, it's been um, that they've had to bend, bend, bend as as the census has increased with COVID and they've had to do other things, which is you know kind of what they're trained to do. But I think it's gonna to continue to be an issue in the healthcare system just generally because you're fighting with these staffing agencies and all this other stuff. And maybe that bubble will burst, but at least as of right now, you're seeing that not just in Florida, but around the country. Governor, yes, this particular site has uh, stopped providing a Johnson & Johnson vaccine as of today. Do you know why? So the question's about the J&J. Uh, so this site, uh, no, no sites are getting them now because we have not gotten a shipment from the federal government since May 2nd was the last time the state got J&J. &J. So they've been farmed out as, as needed, but we're now at the point where the, the stockpile is depleted. And so if there's more J&J &J that comes in, then obviously it'll be going out. So right now, uh, the high throughput sites like you have here in Orlando, they're getting a combination of the Pfizer um, and the Moderna. Um, I personally, for these types of sites, you know, I like J&J because &J you just go through once. That's what I got uh, many months ago, and I think that that's a good option. So if we can get more, we obviously want to provide it uh, for all these different sites, particularly when you're talking about uh, people that are getting it in like a non-clinical setting. If it's a drive-through or something, it really does help to be able to have uh, to go one time because then logistically, we know if there's 200 people that come through to Johnson and Johnson. Those are 200 people we don't have to worry about having to be there 30 days later or 28 days or 21 days later. So it is very helpful. I think actually the J&J &J data, I think it's held up very well against Delta, and um, and I think it's been a really good option. So hopefully we'll be able to get some more. And as soon as as soon as we get it, you know, we will feed these high throughput sites. No problem. All right, thanks everybody. Can you give us a message?